Guys, today we're going to talk about a subject that sucks. And speaking of sucks, we have a special guest in the shop today. My dad, David Katz, is here. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, son. <laughs> yes, that is very true. So I am sick and tired of metal blast gates. And for a couple of reasons, I think they're terrible. The biggest of them being is when the blast gate is open, there's a massive gap in it. If you feel around your metal blast gates, you can feel air being sucked in from the side. Now I've created a wooden blast gate in both a four inch and six inch version that I think solves that problem as well as a few others. So let me bring you into the bench and show you a few of the features. So I have full size plans of both the four and six inch on my website. It's important know that these are for the least expensive piping options that people usually use for dust collection systems. The four inch has an outside diameter of 4.215 inches. The six inch has an outside diameter of 6.25 inches. It's the thin wall PVC and your standard sewer drain pipe that you would get at Home Depot for the four inch. I think we've solved a few problems here. The first one being the metal blast gates you mount the pipe on the exterior. Mine you mount on the interior. They're perfectly sized and the ring on the inside is the inside diameter of the pipe and the rings on the outside are the outside diameter. And what that does is you stick your pipe in here and that closes up the gap when the pipe is open. So when you caulk your pipe in, as long as you've cut your pipe square, it seals that gap as you see in the close up here and it keeps any airflow from escaping. When this is closed, it also doesn't leak because it's not a thin piece of metal, it's a piece of flush mounted wood. The wood completely seals this off so you lose absolutely no airflow. So it's important to know when you put your washer spacers in here that the side without the spacers is closest to your dust collector. So let's go ahead and cut up our full size plans, stick them on some plywood and let me show you how to cut these out by hand. We've been cutting these on the CNC if you have one, I'll also have those files available for Fusion 360 so that you can easily write your own G code. Uh, but if not, let me show you. These are very easy to cut out by hand. Should take us about half an hour. In fact, I'm going to have my dad hold the vacuum since we don't have any dust collection. Hey, that sucks. Quickly, Jonathan from the future here. As I was editing this video, I realized I didn't say why I had the gap here uh, with the washers. And the reason is just for ease of, of opening and closing. Without them, it's just way too tight. And yeah, you would have zero potential of any air gap, but without it, it's just too hard to crank on this thing. So that's why I overcame that with the interior mounting of the pipe so it goes all the way down past this piece and completely shuts off that gap when the dust collection is open. Okay. Back to the build video. This full size set of plans here, which I just printed out on my printer. It's very easy to do at home, or you can take them to Kinko's and have them print out a full size set for you. But it's really easy. The Adobe Acrobat Reader prints out little grids so you know exactly how to put them together. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and cut these up and glue them to some wood and cut out some blast gates. So we're over here at the Sindel Spin, the Sindel. Spin it up, Junior. Oh, geez, Dad. So let's talk about what's critical here. So these two pieces are gonna be sliding into each other. So you wanna make sure you take the line there. The rest of them, you're gonna go right to the line. These, you're gonna take the line. The center circle is not quite as critical as the exterior pieces. The exterior pieces, you wanna get that pretty close. These circles are also critical because that is sized perfectly for the outside of the pipe. So don't go too far on these. In fact, check your fit as you go so you make sure that you kind of are getting it just right. And you're gonna be able to caulk around that so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be a snug fit. going to go ahead and drill the holes. Now I have the size listed as 0.28 so that on the CNC the quarter inch bit can work its way down. 
Uh, but I'm going to drill them to a quarter inch for the quarter 20 bolts I'm going to use to hold this thing together. The holes over here for the paracord or leather or whatever straps you want to do, I'm going to do those at 0.35, but that doesn't matter at all. If you do want to drill these out a little bit bigger than a quarter inch, it'll help with a little bit of adjustability when you're screwing it together, but it's really not going to give you too much unless you're way off on your lines. So we're going to go ahead and use a center punch or a scratch all and make sure we get dead center. All the centers are really marked out on the plan. So we're going to go ahead and punch those out and give them some drilling. So we're gonna go ahead and peel off the paper, give these a sanding, a round over at the router table, I like to do an eighth inch, and then we're gonna put these together. I'm gonna to skip over the sanding and the round over because there's some important parts about putting it together. So let's get started on that now. Okay, so now here's where things get critical. Because you're gonna be caulking pipes into this, it's important that you only put paste wax on the correct side. So what I like to do is I'll sort of pre-assemble it so I see which parts of my plywood I want to do. So the outside pieces, you only want to do one side, and that's the one that's closest to the moving part. So you're only going to do one side of that. The moving part, you can do both sides of, as well as the spacer, you can do both sides of. And then again, your bottom piece, you only want to do the inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and wax these, and then we're going to put this together. So now we're going to go ahead and put these together. You're going to need four quarter 20 bolts. I'm using the three inch. That seems to be about the right size. Four regular washers, four locking washers, and four bolts. The order of this is really important. So this is, the bolts are going to go through, and this is on the tool side. This is the side the bolts go through. And then you're going to put your regular spacer washers on top of there. And again, the space side is the tool side. And then you're gonna put your moving piece as well as your spacer. And then we're gonna sandwich that all together with your outside piece. Now this is the piece that goes closest to your dust collector. Then on top of there, you're gonna put your lock washers. 7 16th, you'll thank me later. That's the socket size you need here. So then we're just gonna go ahead and make these hand tight. You don't wanna crank down on them, otherwise you'll keep your piece from moving. And the lock washers are gonna hold everything in place. When you're installing your pipes, you wanna make sure that your blast gate is closed. You're then gonna put whatever size pipe you want in there. For me, I usually, these are very short because when you're installing it in tools, you're around Ys and bends and everything like that. Having it closed is what's gonna seal up that gap and then you're gonna put some clear or whatever color you want, silicone caulking, just making sure that there are absolutely no air gaps there. And then you wanna make sure you install your other side. So flip it over, you're gonna let the weight of it hold it down. You can put in your other side here. And then once that dries, it can be installed and used and it's good to go. Guys, this came out great. Make sure you head over to the website, check out the plans for both the four and six inch blast gates. We're releasing a video on Sunday that's gonna detail the entire dust collection system along with everything I learned from my previous system and what I did differently on this one. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed to Jonathan yet on the Instatubes, please do so. Stay safe in the shop and make something.